Hello, Science 9 students. Hopefully you guys are staying safe at home. Uh, this is Mr. Tadhill. Uh, today, we are going to learn about work. Now in science, work is something completely different than what you guys might think about work. Uh, when work comes to your mind, you might be thinking, oh, I'm gonna go to the grocery store and, and work at, at Super One and I'm gonna work 40 hours a week and I'm gonna get paid. Okay, that is work. Now in science, we define work as um, work is the product of force and distance. Um, to give you an example, work is this. If the weightlifter lifts up the barbell to the top, he did work. Here's what's kind of weird about work in science though. If I take the weight and I move it up and then hold it right here, as I'm holding it, no work is being done. If I'm moving it, now I am doing work because I'm applying a force to this object and I'm moving it a distance. But if I'm just holding it right here, I'm doing no work. So science, the definition of work in science is it's kind of weird to think about. You have to move an object on a certain distance with a certain amount of force. Um, you guys can probably think about, here's another one for you. Speaking of weightlifting, if you go to the gym and you do a wall sit, are you doing work when you're just pushing against the wall? And the answer would be no. Technically you are doing no work. Your body might be telling you you're doing work. If I push against this wall right here, am I doing work? The answer would be no. I haven't moved at a certain distance. So in order for work to happen, you have to be moving it. So like it says right here, when the weightlifter does no work on the barbell, when he's holding it over his head. Same thing, if I'm holding this up here, doing no work. My arm might get tired over time, but I am doing no work when I'm just holding it there. So in order to do work in science, it has to, you have to apply a force and it's gotta move a certain distance. So I'm doing work when I push this. All right. Um, now the work and the direction have to be in the same, uh, like the vectors have to be in the same direction. So if you apply a force on this suitcase and push it this way, the force is doing the work, except for right here, okay, it's going at an angle but there's two vectors. You got this one and this one. Now the one that's doing the work is the one that actually is moving it. So the suitcase is moving this way. So this force arrow is actually doing the work. The upwards is not really doing anything. Um, if you were to carry the suitcase like this, you are technically doing no work. So if I have this calculator and I'm just holding it right here, and I'm walking this direction, and I can even walk back and forth. Technically, I'm doing no work because the calculator is moving this way and the force is this way. So in order for something to do work, it has to be in the same direction. So this force is in the same direction it's doing work. Um, yes, you might be lifting up on the suitcase, but the arrow that's doing the work is the one that's moving it this way. If you lift and carry the suitcase, technically you're doing no work, which is kind of weird in science because your arm is telling you otherwise, your arm's getting tired. But in this case, if the force is this way, the direction is this way, technically you're doing no work. All right, so that's kind of a summary of what I was just telling you guys. Um, for a force to do work on an object, some of the force must act in the same direction as the object moves. If there's no movement, then no work is done. Um, so that's just kind of a good summary there. So how do we calculate work? Work is pretty easy to calculate. You just take the force and you multiply it times the distance. It's literally that easy, force times distance. Um, so let's talk about the units of work. Um, so in science, we've learned about force. So the unit that we use for force is the what? The Newton. Um, the distance, well in science, we use meter, it's not the foot. So 
So it's going to be a Newton times a meter, which actually gives us a new unit that we call the joule. Maybe some of you guys have heard of that before. So the joule is the SI unit of work. It is equal to one Newton meter. So it's a Newton times a meter. All right. So let's use this formula and let's calculate a few of these problems here. Um, using the work formula, a weight lifter raises a 1600 Newton barbell to a height of two meters. How much work is done on the barbell? Well, start with our formula. Work is force times distance. The force ends up being like the weight of the barbell it's because that's how much force he needs to raise it. Um, the barbell has a weight of 1600 and it says Newtons, so we're good there. Um, we're gonna multiply that times the distance it moved. In this case, it's in meters, so we're good there. So I can just say meters. So if you're using your good mental math skills, uh, 16 times two is 32. Add a couple zeros after it and you have your answer. So it'd be 32 Newton meters. Um, for work, instead of calling it a Newton meter, we call it the joule. So 3,200 joules. That's how much work that weightlifter did when he moved it to meters. Um, but if he's holding that thing over his head, not moving it at all, it would be the force. He would feel a force of 1,600 newtons. But if he moves at zero distance, 1600 times zero is zero. That's why it has to move. In order for work to be done, it has to move. All right, let's try another one. A weightlifter raises a 400 kilogram barbell to a height of two meters. How much work is done? Work is force times distance. The force again is the gonna be the weight of the object, however, it's in kilograms. You guys might recall from a previous chapter that if we're given kilograms and we want to convert it to a Newton, you just multiply it times 9.8. That's the acceleration due to gravity. So we just take 400 times 9.8. And if you really want to know the formula, weight is M times G. The mass is 400, gravity is G. So the answer is 3,920 Newtons. That would be the weight of the barbell. So what's, that's gonna be the force that needs to be applied. Um, the distance it moves, that's still in meters, so we're good there. So 2.0 meters, so times two. And I get an answer of 7,840 joules. So that's how we calculate it works, pretty easy. All right, yeah, so work, pretty simple. Um, so work and power are related in science. Um, power is basically defined as the rate of doing work. So right in the definition there, work is right in it. So power is the rate of doing work. I'm gonna go back to this key point because I wanna show you guys a picture here. I'm gonna ask you guys a question. What requires more power? this person shoveling their driveway or this person using the snowblower let's just say um, the driveway is the same size so what are you guys thinking about that what's going to require more power all right well the answer is going to be the snowblower requires more power um, i can show you the, the math on this how do we calculate power? It's work divided by time. So I'm gonna prove this to you. Yes, if you answered snowblower, your answer was correct. That one requires more power. I'm gonna show you guys a sample calculation to prove that the snowblower requires more power. So power is work divided by time. Let's say, like I told you, the driveway is the same. So the amount of work being done is the same. Let's just say for easy numbers, let's just say it's 1,000 joules of work is required to shovel both those driveways or snow blow it. Um, obviously, it's gonna take this person a lot longer to shovel the driveway. Um, for simplicity, let's just say it took 1,000 seconds. 
So if you take one th uh, thousand divided by thousand, the power would be one. Now let's look at the snow blower. This could probably get the same driver done in ten times, or you know, ten times quicker. So let's just say uh, one hundred for the amount of time it took. So the power that was used to do the driveway is 10. So here's the proof. What required more power? It was the snowblower required more power. That would be the answer. And that's all, now we'll go back to this. This goes back to this idea right here that doing work at a faster rate requires more power. So if you wanna do the same amount of work but at a faster rate, it requires more power. Um, so to increase the power, you could either increase the amount of work done in the same time, or you could do a given amount of work in less time. Um, I already showed you guys that brief calculation on how we do this, or how we calculate power in science. Power is work divided by time. Um, let me skip ahead here. Well, let me go back. This would be a good spot to write it. So power is work divided by time. Let's talk about the units and stuff. Power, work, divided by time. You guys know that the unit for work is the joule. Um, time is going to be in seconds. And then we're in science, so we just do seconds. So a joule per second gives us a new unit. We call that the watt. And you guys may have heard of that before. So a joule divided by second is the watt. So the unit that we use for power in science is the watt. Um, another formula that we use for power is this. Work is force times distance. So another formula we can use is force times distance divided by time. That's just taking work and plugging in force times distance for it. So if you know the work, you're good to go to use the formula. Maybe you actually have to calculate the work first, which is force times distance, and then divide by time. Both formulas work to give you your power. Okay. So this is kind of doing a summary of the units that I was telling you. Power is work divided by time, which is the joule per second. The joule per second is the watt. So it's the SI unit of power. So let's uh, practice a few calculations with power. So power um, would be work divided by time or power is force times distance divided by time. I'm gonna write them both down in this problem because you might see one of these might work better. So it says you exert a vertical force of 72 newtons to lift a box to a height of one meter in a time of two seconds. How much power is used to lift the box? So we're looking for power. Um, it says we applied a force and we moved the box a distance of one meter. So we just lifted it up one meter in two seconds. So can I use this formula? And the answer would be no, I don't have the work yet. Um, I have to calculate the work first by taking the force, 72. So I'll plug that, I'm gonna use this one. So power would be 72 times two divided by the, oops, sorry, it's one meter, he didn't move it two meters. And then divide that by the two. So we have to plug in force, distance divided by time. So 72 divided by two gives us 36 watts. So power is very easy to calculate too. Work's easy to calculate, force times distance. Power is basically the rate of doing work. So power is basically the rate of doing work. All right, so your family is moving to a new apartment while lifting a box 1.5 meters up to put it on a truck. You exert an upward force of 200 newtons for one second. How much power is required to do this? Well, we're gonna use the power formula again. And I can see I have a force, a distance, and a time. So I'm gonna use force times distance divided by time. Let's see here, the force was 200 newtons. The distance was 
and the time required was one. So then I'll take 200 times 1.5 equals that, times that would be uh, 300. So it'd be 300 watts. And I'm going to use the unit watts because that's what power is. So, all right, let's keep working. Um, I think you guys are getting the idea here. It's a pretty simple formula. I'm going to skip this one. Um, let's see here. I think we can probably skip this one. I'll leave those for you guys to try to solve. So let's uh, talk about the last vocab word, um, which is the horsepower. So James Watt and the horsepower. So another common unit of power is the horsepower, which you guys maybe have heard of. Um, so one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. Um, so James Watt and um, the late 1700s wanted to figure out a way to compare power outputs of steam engines that he had designed. And horses were the logical choice for some for a comparison as it was the only source of power back in the 1700s. So he, he wanted to come up with an idea of how many watts could one horse do. So given the one horsepower and he figured out that one horse could roughly do 746 watts of power. So that's where it comes from. Um, so if you want another idea of this is if you have a four horsepower engine, this is like saying this would do the same work as four horses and that given amount of time. So if we have a cornfield that we need to get tilled up, four horses will till up the cornfield just fine, but a four horsepower tiller is gonna do the same work in the same amount of time. So you could use four horses and you can get it tilled up or you could use the four horsepower tiller and do the same thing. So it's gonna do the same work in the same amount of time. So that's where the horsepower comes into play. All right, so we got some questions that we should answer real quick. It says, in which of the following cases is work being done on an object? Well, let's look at letter A. Pushing against a locked door. Is the door gonna move? No. So that answer is wrong, A. B, suspending a heavy weight with a strong chain. Is it moving? No, that one's not right. I'm uh, pulling a trailer up a hill. Let's see here. So the direction is this way, the force, and it's moving up a hill. Yeah, that one's gonna be C. All right, so the next one. A tractor exerts a force of 20,000 newtons to move a trailer eight meters. How much work was done on the trailer? Well, this should be pretty simple. Um, what's the formula for work? Force times distance. Well, the force is 20,000. Um, the distance was eight meters, so 20,000 times eight. Oh, bingo, there's our answer, 160,000. Now uh, let's see here, I think what we'll do, I'll skip ahead, let's try this one. One horsepower is unit of power equal to, you guys should have seen from the previous slide, it is C, 746 watts. All right, well, Thanks for watching the video. You guys are gonna have a Schoology assignment. It's gonna be called 14.1, Work and Power. If you guys have any questions, just uh, submit it to Schoology in the discussion. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.